welcome to One More Glass, the weekly wine show that is going to attempt, and I think we're successfully doing this, and I think we will continue to successfully do this, demystify the world of wine. Let's wait for the comment, shall we? Uh, if you negatively comment about this, which of course free speech says you should be able to, we're going to we'll, crack we'll, down on it. We'll delete it, yeah. We'll delete it. Yeah, yeah, we can't take that kind of abuse. That's the great thing about the internet, you can just control um, <laughs> all the positivity. Back to the point, demystifying wine. This week's topic is acidity. We're going to demystify acidity. So talk to me, Jack. What is the common uh, misconception or the general uh, perception of acidity in wine and what role it plays and why is it important? So acid sounds bad, right? It does sound bad, yeah. Acid has many negative connotations. Let's not go into what those may be. Yeah. Um, but really, it's essential in all wine production. I think we were talking about this earlier. You mentioned Red wine. Yeah. People don't commonly associate acidity with red wine. Yeah, I think most people, you know, the, the normal person who drinks wine will immediately go, oh, acidity, white wine, red wine, they wouldn't necessarily think acidity is involved in it too Ex much. Exactly, yeah. So actually, we're going to stick to white wine for yep. the sake of simplicity today, but, but wine, you know, one of its essential aging components is acid. Um, red wine also has tannin, which we'll explore at some point later on, but white wine is solely able to age off of its acidity. So really all the, the age-worthy wines in the world, which tend to be the finest wines, yeah. have high acidity. Okay. Um, so what have we got? So you've got two examples here of wines that really show the varying levels of acidity you find. So you've chosen a Viognier yeah. and you've chosen a Riesling. Now just explain to the viewers which one you would associate with high acidity and which one you have low acidity. Feel free to guess before he tells you the answer. Do you want to give him five seconds? Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Jack, what's the answer? If you said Viognier has low acidity, you were right. Well done. Congratulations to those that have chosen Viognier. Well done to you. Um, and our Riesling has very high acidity. Um, actually, here we're not looking at regional differences so much as grape varieties. Yeah. So Viognier is a low acid grape. Um, which can be great. Um, is that just come about in the natural process of um, the Viognier grape growing on the vine? It will just naturally not have as much acidity as a Riesling grape? Yeah, exactly. Um, but actually, you can grow Riesling in a different climate and it will have a lower acidity. It tends to be a high acid grape, so we've really got two things here that, that are very typical of where they should be. But take Chardonnay, for mm -hmm. example. If you were to grow it in France, in Burgundy, it would have a very high acidity. If you were to take it to Australia, mm -hmm. it would have a very low acidity if, if not managed in a certain way. So really, like we spoke, spoke about with alcohol and sugar, um, they, they kind of play off against each other. So a very hot climate usually produces low acid wine, a very cold climate produces high acid wine. Yeah. And that's all to do with, with how long you can ripen the grapes for and that process. So let me just ask you a question. You're saying Viognier is a grape variety, typically has lower acidity just because of the grape that it is. Um, does that mean that you don't necessarily get fine wines at a Viognier that can age a long time? Is that pretty much? Yeah, okay. there, are, there are very few age-worthy Viognier wines. Even yep. the very top of the tree, which is uh, called Chateau Con Rio. Condry, yeah, in, in the Rhone Valley, yeah. uh, they don't age for very long. Okay. You've maybe got five, ten years in them tops. Okay. Whereas our Riesling over here could age, or well, Lord knows how long. Okay, so let's taste let's taste these two wines and talk about the flavours and the aromas and, and obviously the acidity that we find there. So the first wine we've got here is a, is a German Riesling um, from uh, what very is fetching is label, about? isn't it? Yeah, it's a beautiful label, yeah. and um, it's one of those annoying bottle shapes that for those of you at home that have got wine fridges, um, this doesn't actually fit in very well. No, not really. It's a bit of an inconvenience. I think yeah. they they didn't really think about the marketability of the bottle mm. shape, did they? I've when got they one sat on top of my wine fridge at the moment, so it won't go in. So, story of my life. Let's talk about this particular uh, Riesling. Okay, do you want to try it? Give it a go. So, Germany, if anyone's been to Germany, especially where they grow this, quite cold. It's not somewhere you go for your, your summer holidays. Mm. This wine naturally has very high acid, and uh, it's actually growing on incredibly steep slopes overlooking the fouts. Mm. Um, what do you think? Well, I mean, just for me, when you taste it, you get a really, I don't know how to describe this, but it's almost like a wide feeling. Like it feels quite broad in the mouth. Yeah. I just want to finish there. 
It just feels like, um, almost like when you bite into an apple and you just get that sort of sharpness in the back of your sort of jaw line here in the back of your jowls. So that's um, that's where your saliva glands are. Okay. So that's why your, your saliva naturally is produced to counter acidity, to okay. lower it, to neutralise in your mouth. Um, so, 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 wait, so, if you, so if I taste the wine and mm. I can feel my saliva glands Working, working, working that means that the acidity is higher. Yeah. So that's your way of determining the, the acidity levels in a wine. Yeah. So this, here's here's our pro tip to you guys at home. If you want to taste acidity, if you want to be a professional taster, drink some wine. And Tom, you give you give this a go. Put some wine in your mouth. Okay. Hold it in there for a bit and swallow it, and then lean your head forward. So swallow the wine. Yeah. <laughs> really, really get them going. And then you just got to hang your head like that. And if you're feeling brave, open your mouth and and uh, you'll you'll start to dribble. So maybe... I'm a dribbling mess. <laughs> Jack, you tell me to dribble. Not, not for the first time. Not for the first time, no. So maybe don't do this at dinner parties, but you know, good way of telling how high acid a wine is. Okay, so you're saying if I play the same parlor trick with this uh, Viognier, I'm not going to find the same thing. Well, you, I feel like I'm drinking alone in this episode. So you, you do I feel dribble like, a fair bit. I, I feel like Jack's getting very off very lightly in this episode. I feel like I'm the, I'm the guinea pig and Jack's... Um, Terribly sorry. ...the circus master. You know, I feel like I'm jumping through hoops with this guy. Uh, and this is a man that's wearing what looks like, to me, a, a, a fishing fly on his, on, on his jacket lapel. And, He's also dripping. A lot of acid in there. A oh. lot of acid. Cool. Right, let's move on to this quickly Did before you get we dribble everywhere. this morning on the way in here? Hmm? I say this morning, I mean on the way into the studios this evening. What's that? Did you, get, did you walk by the River Thames? Oh, yeah. Place? Yeah, well, fish goes very well with high acid, won't it? Oh, you that know? is a great link. Just, just that go around that. Yeah, so. Okay. Seamless, right? So, if you're on yet. We'll Viognier. leave that for the food and wine pairing. Episode. Yeah, yeah, we'll go back to that later. So Viognier, it's good that you're able to pronounce it because it's it's tough. I think you see that on the shelf. And actually, everyone knows Sauvignon Blanc, um, Cabernet Sauvignon, all these easy to pronounce grape varieties. Well, it looks like Viognier. Viognier, yeah. Viognier. And, and this is the thing, Viognier is lovely. It's really easy to drink because it is low acid. It, it sort of smells... It's quite a, I think this is a wine that has a little bit more femininity around it. I think so. But... It's, it is genuinely... Very floral, very aromatic, really expressive. But genuinely delicious. And, and people order Sauvignon Blanc and things ahead of this because they can't pronounce it. Okay, so look, this is all about acidity. So we do the taste test, the, you know, the, the one we just tried and I dribbled all over the place as well as you did. Mm -hmm. Nothing. This has got a lot more acidity, so you're going to feel the effects of it a lot quicker, which is what we have done. You know, immediately for both of us, bang, Straight you away. had that saliva coming out. You could feel the saliva gans, and that's a completely different feel and, and taste in the mouth. So what's our, what's our takeaway from this? I think the takeaway for me is, I think there's a lot of negative connotation towards acidity in wine. I think people that are beginning and getting into wine talk about it as a dirty word, and I think it's actually good to talk about it as a, as a very positive thing about wine. It is in all wines, to varying degrees, as you said, depending on great variety or region, or obviously the winemaking style. Um, but it's also a good thing if you're talking about high quality wine, wines that are going to age, wines you can sell her, um, regardless of them being white or red. Uh, I mean, white obviously can only rely on the acidity, as you mentioned, because red obviously has tannins. But the important thing is that wines need acidity. And actually, when it comes down to it, and I think this is going to be a common theme, it's all about being a well-made wine, well-integrated, balancing all these different elements into it. And I think acidity is one of those elements. It just needs to be well-integrated and balanced, but it's a necessity, and it's something you're always going to find uh, in all types of wines. But obviously you might like or not like the, the, the flavour or the taste of acidity, so you might be more inclined to drink Viognier if you don't necessarily want a high acid wine. And if you're someone that prefers that acidity, that freshness, uh, the feeling you get, then you might want to drink more Riesling. So I think that's my takeaway from what you've told me and the science behind it. So I think what you're saying is knowledge is power. The more you know, the, the easier you can select low acid, high acid, whatever you want to drink. And also just understanding these things and then putting them into practice. So going out and trying these different types of wine and putting these experiments into play yourself, maybe not in front of your, your friends and family, or especially not if you're on a date. Mm. Um, but certainly, you know, understanding more about wine and, and, and really sort of analysing wines by obviously the, 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 the makeup of them and, and what actually makes them taste and, and, and feel the way that they are. There you go. You heard it here first. The only way to get to know wine more is to drink more. Of course. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed that episode uh, on acidity. We hope you've learned something and there's something to take away from it. And make sure you leave a comment below. 
If not, uh, and you enjoyed this and you want to watch more great content from myself and Jack, then make sure you follow or subscribe us. But for this week, thank you very much for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers. Take care.